All right, you're welcome back. You're still watching Breakfast Daily here on City TV. It's time to talk health. Yes, indeed. Yeah. The month of May uh, has been declared a lupus awareness month. And yesterday was actually uh, the World Lupus Day, where we'll pick a day to celebrate or to create awareness about the condition, what it is, the symptoms, the causes, and of course, how to uh, stay safe or prevent or avoid a lupus. The theme for this year is what? Make lupus visible. Yes, mm -hmm. and we have some amazing individuals in the studio uh, to help us look at the issues with lupus and of course, how to treat or prevent contracting it. Definitely. Yep. Now, Dr. Jifa Day is here. Now, she's a senior lecturer and consultant rheumatologist at the University of Ghana Medical School and mm -hmm. the Department of Medicine at Kolibu Teaching Hospital. Welcome, Doc. Thank you very Always much. Always great Charlie. to see you. Nice to meet you again as well. And Angela Karras is Glow Group leader. She'll tell us what Glow Group is all mm -hmm. about. And she's yeah. also here to talk to us about lupus. Good morning, yeah. Angela. Good morning. Welcome to Breakfast Daily. Thank both thank of you. you. So, nice. lupus, mm -hmm. World Lupus Awareness Day, Lupus Awareness Month. For those who don't know, what is lupus, Doc? So, lupus is a short um, or name for a longer name. So, okay. it's, it's systemic lupus erythematosus. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. most, people call it <laughs> <laughs> most people call it lupus Let's or SLE lupus. for sure. <laughs> <laughs> So it is what we call an autoimmune condition, a mm. chronic autoimmune condition, because people live it with it for the rest of their lives. Wow. And um, when we say uh, an autoimmune disease, it's basically the immune system attacking itself. Mm. And for lupus, it's one of the ones that we call a multi-systemic autoimmune disease, mm. meaning the immune system attacks virtually every part of the body at one time or stage or the other. Mm. It okay. can do that. So how right. does somebody even know that they have lupus? What, what kind of symptoms might they notice? So the team for Lupus Awareness Day uh, or month is worldwide is make lupus visible. Yeah. Locally, however, we are talking about the thousand phases of lupus okay. because it really can manifest in so many ways. Mm. And that's what makes diagnosis difficult mm. because... For one person, it's, the person may present with skin involvement, okay. another person may present with kidney problems. Right. So across board, it's difficult to say one specific symptom um, that will tell mm. you that you have lupus because it's something like what we medically will call a syndrome. It spans mm. across from mild to life-threatening. Mm. Wow. So across most of the patients, there are things that you may notice, however. Um, fatigue, they okay. are tired. You wake up and you feel on fresh joint pains, especially in the small joints of the hands. You wake up in the morning and your, your joints are stiff. It okay. takes you a while until you feel like you can move freely. Hair loss is one of the features that mm. um, patients may have as well. It may not be for everybody, but that's also one of the common things. Unexplained weight loss. You are losing okay. weight. You are not actually trying. Mm. And you notice your weight is going mm. down, down. Then yeah. you should be worried about that. Some people may report fever. Mm. Sweating in the night, especially, that is also some of the constitutional mm. symptoms. The rest of the symptoms will be specific, depending on the organ in which the immune system is attacking. Mm. So if it's af okay. affecting the eye, some people will come with redness of the eye, inability to see clearly. You may diagnose them as having inflammation in the eye. Mm. They may have sores in the mouth, skin rashes, because the skin is involved. Mm. Chest pain and difficulty in breathing if the chest or the lungs are affected, or the heart is affected. Okay. If they have kidney problems, typically swelling of the face in the morning, swelling of the legs, mm. that may be an early sign that the kidney might be involved as well. Right. So it really it's really varied. Yeah, 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 exactly. Like yeah. So yeah. what are the numbers like in Ghana? And on average, how many people are you seeing being diagnosed when you know With coming through your department? Across the world, it's difficult to have precise prevalence um, rates because of how it presents mm. as well. Locally, we don't have uh, prevalence data because it's quite difficult um, even getting awareness in. But for hospital-based data, two years ago when we looked at our patient's population compared to other diseases, if you take about 
thousand cases, two point three of them were lupus cases. Okay. Mm. Currently five point two eight of the thousand mm. are lupus cases. Whoa. So obviously there was an increased increase, trend of yeah. the numbers that we are seeing. Wow. And that is also playing across the world as well. Wow. Especially people of African yeah. descent. Yeah. Oh right. Yeah. Wow. Okay. Let's let's talk to Angela. Tell us about the Glow Group and your involvement with the Lupus Awareness Month. So Glow um, stands for the Global Lupus Outstanding Warriors. Okay. And is a subgroup that is within the Rheumatology Initiative, which is the mm. mother um, organization. Okay. So um, Glow basically is made up of persons or patients mm. living with the condition lupus mm. and so i'm also a patient myself oh yeah. really yes, <laughs> yes. <laughs> and i happen to be the group leader for um mm. the global lupus outstanding warriors nice. yes. how, how difficult is it to diagnose a person with lupus very difficult mm. very mm. difficult because of how it presents i'll tell you even as a specialist mm. sometimes i'm amazed as to how patients present someone mm. can present with seizures until somebody notices something peculiar that this mm. is not a regular seizure and then you do investigations someone presents with just sleeping all day long <laughs> and mm. then they are like no this is not the person's normal mm. until yeah. somebody also notices something um, um, different about the person and then wow. it might hint so across the world we know that there's an average about four to five years befo mm. before people are diagnosed even in advanced countries mm. because it can present in so many different ways if mm. you are not on the alert for it you would easily you miss, miss it, it unless they present with classical signs mm. like the rash and the joint Things symptoms. Like yeah. So That's Angela, dangerous. what was it for you that, that made you think something isn't right or, you know? Okay, so for me, I think it started 10 years. I had symptoms for, for a period of 10 years without oh. knowing. I was, mm. I think I was in final year in, in secondary school then. Okay. And the first manifestation was um, a panic attack. Wow. And because I was that young, I didn't mm. know what a yeah. panic attack was. So for mm. me, it was a traumatic experience. Mm. And I thought I was being attacked spiritually. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I was doing all the prayers and stuff. Mm. And it was occurring like frequently. Okay. So I started developing anxiety. So from 2005, I was being treated. I was put on treatment okay. at the psychiatric hospital mm. um, for depression, anxiety and then panic disorder because it was very frequent. Okay. And so between 2005 and 2014, I was on medication for different medications for mm. anxiety and then the panic disorder until 2014 when I started getting swellings, mm. um, my knees, my wrist, my elbow, my knuckles. And it used to happen like 10 days to my period. Okay. Mm. So I actually thought it had to do with mm -hmm. like, you know, mm -hmm. women's stuff. Free menstrual stuff. Mm. And it wasn't, it wasn't going. So I, I saw a physician specialist at Ridge mm. who thought it would be rheumatoid arthritis because okay. it had to do with the joints. Yeah. And when she ran the test and rheumatoid was negative, she didn't like, go further to check yeah. if it was what any else? other thing. Exactly, yeah. But I took the lab results back home mm -hmm. and I studied it. And I realized that the ANA um, antinuclear um, antibody yes. was positive. Mm -hmm. And they gave a summary of um, you know, that lab results that if your ANA is positive, then the possibility of you having an autoimmune condition is high. high. Right. Okay. But also, it could be a false alarm. So I put my hope in the fact that it would be a false, a false alarm. alarm. But it pushed me to start researching on what autoimmune conditions were all mm. about. And I came across lupus, RA, and then along the line, I read stories of people who mm. had died with, lup like, mm. with lupus. And so I got scared. Right. And then while I was reading, I could, I, I could identify with almost all the symptoms, the symptoms that there. I was reading. Mm. But I was trying so hard to, mm. you know, Refuse some level yeah. of denial. Yeah, yeah, yeah. some yeah. level of de denial. Till mm. um, my gynecologist said he would try um, to put me on contraceptives if it would help um, the pain. Mm. But unfortunately, he didn't know that um, the estrogens 
in like the contraceptives actually mm, worsening yeah. you know the condition and then causes your symptoms to be worse mm. so i didn't get better usually when the blast starts flowing then everything ceases mm. but this time around the swellings were continuous like mm. the month through wow. so i got back to him and he realized that it wasn't and then referred me to see Dr. Day. So okay. that's how mm. come Finally. I met yeah. Doc after yeah. 10 years of Goodness. up and down, seeing different doctors. Mm. And I think when I spoke to her, my first interaction with her, she asked a lot of questions. She examined me. And then I got the butterfly rash as well. Okay. Oh, you did? And when okay. it came, I took a picture of mm. it. So I had it on my phone. So I just showed it to her that I got this rash, mm. you know, some time back. And then she was like, at, at this point, she feels like 80 to 90% chance that i have lupus, lupus. and I, I remember that wow. day I, I really wept oh. <laughs> i'm sure there was yeah. a sense of relief as well that finally someone you know no for me for me that day it wasn't it was, <laughs> i wasn't relieved because i, I read a lot so i had yeah. read so much and unfortunately i had read the bad side oh. of it and okay. so like hearing that you have lupus my yeah. everything every all i was thinking about is i'm going to die yeah, that's like oh. i'm not going to live long it'll mm. be like every other person but I realized that along the line that every two case, like two, no two cases are the same. Right. So okay. it was a few weeks after that, at least, mm. I was happy that okay. So after 10 years of trying to find out what, what the what problem really you know, was, you. now I, I know what it is. Yeah, but dog, how, how dangerous is it then? Because from her story, it took yeah. 10 years to mm -hmm. find out. So what are the dangers associated with misdiagnosing mm -hmm. and then prescribing wrong medicines to treat a condition that perhaps may not be existing? That is one of the challenges that we have because mm. late diagnosis really affects patients. Mm -hmm. We know that by the time patients are diagnosed, mm. for especially for African patients, about 50% of them will have kidney involvement. Wow. So if this is delayed, mm. by the time they come, that will be mm. what we call end-stage kidney disease, yeah. mm. meaning they are going on to dialysis. dialysis. Delayed diagnosis means that mm. if the immune system is affecting an organ, once it's damaged, then it's going to really affect the lifespan yeah. of the patient. Yeah. So the aim and the reason why we raise awareness is to highlight this so that early diagnosis can yeah. be made. With early diagnosis, patients have 80 to 90% mm -hmm. chance of living a normal life with proper treatment and support. Great. Without it, the chances are <laughs> far less. 80 to 90% within five years, the patients mm -hmm. will have problems. Yeah. Wow. W what are treatment methods like now? Are there specific treatment plans for lupus or do you treat symptoms? Mm -hmm. No, so we treat, yes, some of the symptoms. Um, for example, if the heart is involved, mm. we have to take fluid okay. off and other things. But the main treatment of autoimmune conditions is the immune system is overacting. Mm. It's attacking mm. organs. Mm. So we try to calm it down. Okay. It's not like other, th um, other diseases where mm. they say immune diseases where the immune system is low. This one is actually heightened, mm. but it's not working efficiently. Mm. So we use drugs to suppress it so that it stops what it's doing and hope that we keep it in that state. Because okay. right. it's a disease that we, mm. we say remits and um, relapses. It goes up, comes down. And so you have to catch it at the point where it's yeah. going up and making sure that you have calmed it down. And you need to balance it finely because if you suppress it too much, then you expose the patient to Alpha. infections mm -hmm. and other yeah. things yeah. as well. Because your immune mm. system Balancing is also acts. Mm. Definitely, that's what wow. it is. Wow. So we have different drugs um, from what we call steroids, mm. okay. that we use acutely. They also have their side effects, mm. so you have to be careful with it. And we have what we call immunosuppressive drugs mm. that actually target the immune system at the point where you want to mm. um, treat it at. And we have newer drugs we call biologics that are even more specific but very expensive mm. to treat the condition. What, what are some of the activities we'll be seeing this month? as part of the awareness creation? So we're doing a lot of education as mm. we usually do on all our social media platforms. Um, if you go to social media at Tri Ghana, mm. T-R-I Ghana, you find a lot of our educational activities that we right. are doing. We are showing videos, um, interviews with people, um, showing what they are living with. So hopefully mm. that highlights, we can't tell you the number of people who have been diagnosed because they've had some story or right. the other. We are organizing a webinar for doctors mm. to educate them about lupus because we find out that, in fact, since we started raising awareness, our diagnostic capabilities as medical personnel mm. has also improved. Right. And that so helps because we are mm. getting early diagnosis these days and we That's cannot overemphasize yeah. that. So yeah. we're doing some webinars for our doctors as well mm. okay. um, as part of our activities. Awesome. Uh, awesome. Uh, you awesome. know, Angela, you mentioned the fact that you, at a point you thought you were being attacked mm. spiritually, you know, 
when it comes to causes, do we know if this mm. is this a hereditary aspect? Is it congenital? Does it develop along the line? What do we know about the, the root causes of this? For most autoimmune diseases, we know there's a genetic background. Mm. Okay. Um, we don't say it is hereditary, but there is mm. a genetic background, meaning whatever your gene makeup is, that is what makes your immune system likely to be overreactive. That same gene could be protecting you from other diseases, but it makes oh. your immune system overreactive. But you need a trigger. So that alone is not enough. So that's mm. why you would see people in the same family have the, the same genetic makeup, but they all don't have lupus or RA, for example. But you need a trigger, and mm. that is what stimulates the immune system. Yeah. And that is different for different people. Again, okay. that is what makes treatment um, quite difficult, because mm. if you could identify one trigger, then you could block it. Mm. But for some people, it could be stress. In fact, stress is a very big factor. Mm. Mm. Estrogens or drugs, like yeah. Angela said, that trigger yeah. her own. Yeah. Some hormones can do that. Mm. The sunlight even can trigger it for oh, people wow. who have lupus. Yes. Oh my goodness. Petroleum products can mm. do that. Those who work in the petroleum industry, industry. that can also yeah. trigger some types of, mm. of uh, lupus as well. Mm. Mm. The female, being female alone, oh. makes mm. you more predisposed to having lupus as mm. well. So the yes. hormone estrogen, that's why the contraceptive estrogen mm. also worsens it, makes you more likely. What to of get. lifestyle? Lifestyle, yes. We mm. said stress. Yeah. Uh, we haven't identified dietary factors that mm. specifically that uh, predispose you to having lupus. Right. Even though there are certain dietary factors now that we identify that help modulate the immune mm. system, like vitamin yeah. D, probiotics are helpful. Mm. Okay. So those incorporating them in your diet mm. helps. We have foods that we know have what you call anti-inflammatory properties, yeah. which can help also modulate your immune system as part of your treatment. It's mm. not the only treatment but it can also help to modulate the immune mm. system to make sure that you have a better outcome. Right. You know, it's funny Doc has a butterfly brooch. <laughs> and she mentioned... Yeah, she mentioned wow. the butterfly rash. Yes. Because I read somewhere that lupus yes. actually comes in as that harmless butterfly. Yeah, the butterfly that acts rash. as a vicious wolf. Yes, yes exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So, yes. so the mm. name lupus is actually means wolf. That's so initially really because yeah. Yeah. when it was first discovered, they thought the rash looked like yeah. someone who had been scratched by a wolf. Okay. So that's how oh, the, way the, right. the term yeah. lupus came yeah. about. But wow. because of the rash, the symbol for lupus <laughs> is the butterfly. <laughs> and so when the rash does look like a butterfly, that's butterfly. Butterfly. Yeah. All right. Okay. Great so education. where can we get yeah. more information on lupus? So the Rheumatology Initiative, this mm. is our local organization that we do. Mm. So if you go to triganna.org, yeah. You can get a lot of information from there on social okay. media, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. Um, if you check for GLOW, Global Lupus Outstanding mm. Warriors, or the Rheumatology Initiative, or just simply at Tri Ghana, okay. mm. you should get a media of information as well. Right. Thank you, Dr. Jifa Day. Thank you as well, Angela Karras, for sharing your story mm. with us. You, you've helped a lot of people this morning, I'm yeah. sure. Yeah, I'm sure. Thank Keep you up very the good much. Work. Yeah, definitely. Okay. All right. We'll be right back.